Hey there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I've got a quick tutorial which is going to run through how you can place families in Revit based on blocks from an AutoCAD uh, link in this case in Revit. So I have done a tutorial previously on this topic but I did use another custom package to the one I'm going to use today which was called Link DWG. Unfortunately this package isn't very well supported um, so I wanted to make a tutorial that shows a much more stable method that I use to this day um, using a package called Genius Loci. So you are going to need that in order to get the, the, the node that's pretty much pivotal to this whole workflow. I really like Genius Loci because you can see what's inside the nodes and learn about Python and the Revit API using this package as well. So keep up the great work, Alvin. Anyway, um, without further ado, let's jump in. So in this case, um, for an example, we're going to be using a AutoCAD file. Um, what I've done is set up some blocks, applied rotations to them, and just created a few different types. So in this case, I have two block definitions. Um, I have a 1000 by 1000 box, and I also have a 1000 by 2000 box. It's really important to note that the origin has been intentionally placed at the bottom left corner. Well, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the object that you're placing using this block in Revit ideally has a matching origin or has a known offset to achieve the same origin point. But I would typically recommend that your block in AutoCAD and your block in Revit um, should have a coincident origin. If they don't, you're probably gonna to have to use something like an Excel control file in order to map the difference between these points. It's quite complex, so I'm probably not gonna include it in this tutorial, um, but if you can make the block origins the same, that's ideal. I've also rotated some of these block instances as well, and I'm gonna link this file into Revit and use this as a guidance method to place other blocks. So in this case, um, I'm gonna open Revit, and I'm just gonna make a new project just using any old template. And I'm gonna link in this AutoCAD file. So I'm not importing this file, I'm linking it. Important to note. And in this case, the units are the same, so it's just a millimeters based file. So what I have now is a CAD file. Now I can't place families just yet. Um, what I need to do is actually have families to place first. So this workflow isn't gonna make blocks for you in Revit. You still have to actually make the content itself. So what I'm gonna do is make a new family and I'm just gonna make a generic model and I'm just making a box to the same dimensions and origin as the CAD block. So in this case, this is my origin plan. And so I'm gonna create a right and a front plan. I'm gonna create two dimensions and create parameters. I'm gonna make them type-based parameters. I'm gonna call them width and depth. And I'm gonna place a 3D extrusion and constrain it to those reference planes. And I'll just give it a nominal height for now, just a thousand. What I'm gonna do is create two family types, um, but what I'm gonna do is actually make their type name the same as the block name in AutoCAD. That way we can retrieve this family type using the equivalent block name. Again, if your blocks and your families don't have the same names, you are going to have to use something like Excel to build a mapping file to match those two sets of elements when you read them between the AutoCAD file and the Revit environment. Um, but for now, I'm going to rely on the fact that they are the same name. So what I'm going to do is create two types. I'm going to call one 1000 by 1000. Make it a one by one cube. And I'm going to make 1000 by 2000. I'm gonna make this one 2000 deep. So this is effectively the element that's going to be placed at each block's location. So I'm just gonna save this family. Just I'll just call this testing. Load it into my project. And of course I can go and place these manually at each import object. What I'm gonna do is just set my import to half tone. So we can really see when the family is placed in this position. I'm just going to delete a few elevations that are in my way. And we're now going to use Dynamo to place uh, in, uh, families at these block locations. So I'm going to open up Dynamo. I'm going to use a special node from the Genius Loci package, uh, which can read block import instances. It's written in Python, so you can see the code if you want to. Um, it is quite complicated, but if you're interested, um, the great thing about the Genius Loci package is that you can see all the code that the uh, developer album uh, writes. So we're gonna begin just by looking for CAD block and we're looking for the CAD block node from Genius Loci. We can see in this case that the CAD block node expects an import instance. The easiest way to get one 
is just to select it using a select model element node. So I'm going to select my import instance. Now you might have quite a lot of blocks in your file, so it might take a while to load. Um, so do keep in mind that it is probably better to strip back your file to just what you need ideally. So if you have a set of blocks you want to match in your Revit model, maybe strip out everything except those. I'll copy them to a new file and then place that file in Revit rather than reading something like an 80 megabyte CAD file. Just try and read something that's a bit lighter. Obviously, if your objects aren't blocks, we're not going to be able to retrieve them. So you do need to have blocks anyway. Now that we have blocks, we have a, a lot of information about them as well. So for example, in this case, if I zoom out, we have locations, which we can probably see in Revit. But we also have the block names, the rotations, the layer that they're on. Um, like I said, you can see the code inside here, but of course it is in Python. So it is going to be relatively complicated. Um, it's actually simpler than I expected, but in this case, you can see that he's having to read the objects um, from the AutoCAD link instance in this case. So I'm not going to save that. Um, what we're going to do now is use the block names. Now, if you did have more blocks than what you wanted, you could use a filter in order to break out just the blocks that you care about. But in this case, I'm going to place a family for every single block. So in this case, um, I'm going to firstly be looking for the family instance, and sorry, family type by type name and family name. So I'm going to go to elements and I'm looking for family type by family name and type name. Now I know my family is called testing, so I'm just going to make a testing string for the family name and then I'm going to retrieve the type names by the block names. And because they match, I now have a equivalent family type for that block in AutoCAD. So that's the importance of having matching names. Again, if you don't have matching names, you're going to need to find a way to sort of retrieve a matching index, probably using something like an Excel file. Okay, so at that point, we now also have a placement point and we also have a rotation factor. Now, in this case, we're going to have to reverse the rotation because we're rotating the block in the opposite direction. Um, that's just a quirk that I've found. So what I'm going to do is multiply this by negative one. So I'm taking my rotation times negative one. And what we need to do now is place our block and then we're going to rotate it after. So in this case, we need to place a family instance um, by point. Um, now we can do by point or by point and level. I prefer by point and level because then the family is associated to a level as well. So what I'm going to do is switch to manual mode. I'm going to get my family type. I'm going to get, uh, in this case, my origin point. And I'm also going to get a level dropdown so that I can select the levels that I want those elements to be hosted at. And after these family instances are placed, we're also going to want to rotate them as well. So in this case, I'm going to be setting their rotation using the set rotation node. So I'm going to take that family instance and rotate it after it's placed by that factor. And this is pretty much the script done. It's a very short script. Um, obviously, the hard part is actually just configuring all your blocks and families. That, that's, that's the hard part. And the part I can't really help you with that much. <laughs> so once I run this, we can see we've now placed family instances with the rotation and the type of those blocks as well. So we can see before and after. Um, so we've effectively used a, a method in order to read the blocks from the CAD file without actually having to open AutoCAD as well, um, read their location and their rotation, and place equivalent families. Um, so I hope that that's quite useful. There are lots of other ways you could use this method. For example, if you were doing ceiling-based fixtures, you could, you could always intersect the location of that fixture with the nearest ceiling above it to find a host for it. And then you could also place it within a host. I believe Spring Nodes has something for that. Um, I think it's family instance by host level and point. I'll just check. It's probably under the Spring Nodes package. I'll just, as always, the search tool in Dynamo is doing, doing awfully. <laughs> so Revit, Element, or maybe Family Instance. So we can do by host and point, which is probably the way to do it. Um, so if you can identify the nearest relevant ceiling, you could also host that, that element after it's detected as a block instance. So it's a really uh, useful method, and I guess really the key to it um, is this fantastic note here from Genius Loci. So definitely always shout out to Alban for his amazing package. It has been probably one of my favorites for a long time now. So keep up the great work, really like what you're doing. And I've actually learned a lot about Python from Genius Loci as well, and, and also the Revit API. Anyway, um, that's it.
So there we go, a really useful technique using Dynamo for quite a common task. I'm sure this would be useful for landscape architects, CAD-to-BIM engineers. There's probably all sorts of applications for this. The key is to build your workflow around what you need it to do. So whilst I've given you the technique um, that you can use, in this case, you'll probably need to build upon it to suit your particular scenario. So I guess what I'm saying is don't necessarily ask me to customize this to suit your needs. Use it as an opportunity to learn about how you can take this concept and apply it to your needs instead. A much better learning journey. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.